Hello, darlings. You've all heard of Marilyn Monroe. Welcome back, darlings. I'm here with the director of the museum. Introduce yourself, darling. My name is Harriet Gerard Clark, and I'm the executive director of this museum, which is Raynham Hall Museum in Oyster Bay. You have this event every year. Am I right about that? We do. We have the event every year. Uh, the towns and family of Oyster Bay would have celebrated Twelfth Night rather than Christmas. That really? Was this is the Twelfth Night? Yes, and uh, so they would have not had people in for Christmas, which was a religious uh, holiday, but they would have had people in for Twelfth Night. Twelfth so, Night? Yeah, and they were the first family in Oyster Bay, I understand, to have a Christmas tree. So we decorate the, fa the house for uh, Christmas. And this is our party. Townsend family, they were sea merchants that they owned were. the house, this property and the establishment, and they were quite wealthy. Am I correct in saying that? They were. For, tell us a for little bit time. about, yeah, tell us a little bit about the history. Sure. So the, uh, Samuel Townsend uh, owned this house with his wife, and they had eight children here, and they owned 350 acres all around, uh, five or six uh, merchant ships in the harbor that were built right here in Oyster Bay. And they went uh, across the ocean to uh, uh, the Caribbean, to uh, Belize, uh, and to Europe, uh, it, trading goods from all of those places. So from the Caribbean, as you know, you would have gotten rum and sugar, and you would have traded it for fabrics, that kind of thing. The slave uh, aspect of um, trade was uh, very deep and intertwined, so that's part of the story that we tell in the house as well. The stories that the house is haunted, is mm -hmm. that true? Some people say so. Um, I've never had uh, any experience with hauntings, but uh, we are a very popular destination for people who uh, are on on the search for spirits. Yes. We also have ghost tours here, am I we right do. about we it? Offer ghost tours. Explain that to my audience. So we have ghost tours for people who are interested in, uh, in spirits and uh, we have our uh, education uh, guy, uh, Christopher Judge, who conducts the tours with uh, his cohort Samantha and uh, they get a pretty steady visitation, uh, people looking for the stories of the hauntings of the house. How long have you been the director of the museum? This is my 13th year. You must love it. I do. I do love it here. Yes. I don't blame you. It's really beautiful. And I love history. I certainly love history. And Thank I, you. I was, the first time I came here, I was really, I thought this place was fascinating. I truly, Thank truly you. thought it was fascinating. Part of what I love about the job actually is meeting wonderful people like yourself and uh, who have friends all around the world and who um, love history and uh, so, yeah, I'm very happy to see you and here. We're here to celebrate this very beautiful event. Tell my audience, where can we go to learn more information about the museum? Uh, www.RainhamHallMuseum.org. Fabulous. <laughs> happy you, New Year, Thank darling. You. Happy, happy New, New Year. Year and we'll be back with more interviews coming up, darlings. Keep watching. Pink Champagne Kisses.
Welcome back, darlings. I'm TV host, entertainment journalist, Cognac Willowane. We're here at Raynham Hall. And this is a fabulous event. It's the 12th night that everyone celebrated back in the Townsend family. And I'm here with this gentleman who will, can tell us a little more information about the museum and what he does here. Yeah, my name is Christopher Judge. I'm the Director of Visitor Services and Marketing. And I also am one of the tour guides, so I coordinate uh, e group tours and individual tours for the public. And um, I love the history of the, the having learned about Robert Townsend, who was the third oldest son that grew up in the colonial part of the house. Uh, and the, the part that he played in the American Revolution, uh, serving as a spy for General Washington. Yes, you told me that. I was tri really quite intrigued by that, that he was actually a spy for George Washington. That's so fascinating. Yeah, had we, had we not had members of the cult perspiring continually providing George Washington with information, today we may be flying a, a Canadian flag instead or, or a British outrageous. Uh, a British flag you know so yes, that's pretty outrageous now how long have you worked for the museum um, I've been here for several years uh, part-time as a tour guide and uh, assisting at uh, school groups school tours um, I've worked here for about a year and a half now full-time as uh, as for visitor services and marketing and uh, I really enjoy it it's it's uh, it's you added, love it. You added love to it. My, to my love of country. It's added to my love of community. And, uh, you know, it's helped me, introduce me to a, a lot of new ideas that I hadn't really looked at very closely from, you know, hadn't thought much about from my grade school education. That learning about, you know, how, what part history plays, you know, in, in and how today's how important world. it is in our environment right now right, in our right. society yeah it's they, very important yeah for society they say you, you know uh, you can't know where you're going unless you know where you're you've come from and looking at the the origins of our country 250 years ago what um, what the Patriots you know what they thought of and how they acted against you know uh, what was seen as a, a tyrannical uh, government in England and how that can inform you know how we go forward as a country together you know well, I hope that our country remains free forever yeah absolutely it's it, very important we have to it's keep in our Constitution yeah we have to work for it you know can you tell us what's going on now with the museum any new events that we might be anticipating yeah actually we we are doing a monthly ghost tour with uh, spiritualist healer Samantha Lynn DeFranzo so she is a medium that comes in I give the history stories and she speaks on behalf of the spirits, uh, as this is considered one of the most haunted houses on Long Island. One uh, of the most haunted places right, right. on Long Island. That's right. quite fascinating. So we, we've been doing it since October. And every tour uh, that for the Halloween time period, we had seven tours in total. About 25 people each tour, totally sold out. And then we did another in November. Uh, December we had a cancel because of the uh, bad weather, but we'll be doing it uh, every fourth Friday of every month uh, throughout the rest of the year. And um, people who are interested in can go to our website, RainhamHallMuseum.org, uh, and look up uh, upcoming events, and they can purchase tickets that way. Fantastic. Is there anything else that we should know about? Any Anything else that Raynham Hall is having any programs or anything else besides the ghost tours? Yeah, we're, we're known as being the home of America's first documented Valentine's Day poem. Oh, that's fabulous. You're having a Valentine's party? Uh, well, it's a, a, a poetry contest for, for students grades 4 to 6. And they can submit uh, a, a poem of any of any kind. Uh, it has to be 26 lines total. And they can, uh, they, if they have, want more details, they can email us at valentines at rainhamhallmuseum.org, or you can call the museum at 516-922-6808. Terrific, terrific. Thank you so much for that wonderful interview. You're welcome. And we'll be back in a moment with more interviews right here at Cognac's Corner. Keep watching, darlings. Pink champagne kisses.
back, darlings. I'm TV host, entertainment journalist, Cognac Willow Lane, and we are here at Raynham Hall. We're here for their holiday event. It's January 5th. The next day is January 6th. It's the Epiphany, and I'm here with a big supporter of this museum. Introduce yourself. So my name is Olivia Hagen. Um, I'm a research and writing intern at Raynham Hall Museum, and the reason that I love this place is that they really do a good job of educating kids and instilling like an appreciation for history um, and also telling stories of historical figures who you might not have previously heard about um, like so spies enslaved people women immigrants you hear about a lot of like a lot of history that you probably haven't heard before um, and they do it in a very like a very personal and interactive way really that's interesting fascinating how long have you been involved with Raynham Hall so a few months. Um, I'm a college student, and I recently. So I interned for Justine. That's she's my supervisor. Excellent, excellent. Are you on Instagram? Can we follow? Yeah. You? Uh, so my Instagram is Liv Marshall Hagen with spell it, spell it. All right. So L I V underscore M A R S H A L L underscore H A G A N. Excellent. Well, thank you. Let's air kiss. Well, we'll be back with more interviews, darlings. Keep watching right here at Raynham Hall. Pink champagne kisses. I was diagnosed in 2008. 2006. 2010. I was 32. I was 30. I was only 28 years old when I found out I had breast cancer. Last year, nearly 200,000 women in the United States were diagnosed with breast cancer. That means a woman in the U.S. is told she has breast cancer every two minutes. This video is two minutes long. Every woman on the planet is at risk for breast cancer. And that risk only increases if someone in your family has been diagnosed. So get checked. Check yourself. Perform routine breast exams at least once a month. It's easy, you can do it in the shower. If something doesn't feel right, it's up to you to find out what's wrong. Tell your doctor about any lumps or any unusual skin irritation, itching or pain. Get regular mammograms starting by at least age 40 and every year after that. Breast cancer may not be preventable, but knowing the facts and knowing your body will increase your chances of finding any cancer early. Early detection means it's easier to treat. These are your sisters we're talking about. Mothers, daughters, friends, neighbors. Please, stay aware. Stay healthy. Stay alive. I survived breast cancer. I survived breast cancer. Sobreviví cancer en los senos. I survived breast cancer. I am still fighting breast cancer. Talk to your doctor. Get regular mammograms. And perform routine self-exams. It's as easy as taking a shower. When looking at Raynham Hall Museum, you can see two distinctly different houses which represent different generations of the Townsend family. First, look at the front of the building, which shows us the 1770s, when the family of Samuel Townsend played a pivotal role in the Revolutionary War. Now look at the rear of the house, which reflects the 1870s, when Samuel's grandson, Solomon Townsend II, transformed the house into a lavishly furnished Victorian villa. When the town took ownership of Raynham Hall in 1947 to make it into the house museum you see today, they removed the beautiful bay windows Port Cocher, Tower, Skylight, and other Victorian additions, and put back the original salt box front. For over 200 years, this home was continuously occupied by the Townsend family, and many of the objects and furnishings inside are original to the house. The house is believed to have been built in 1738, and in 1740, a Quaker merchant named Samuel Townsend and his wife Sarah moved here from Jericho. The house was built originally as a two-by-two, two, meaning two rooms below and two rooms above. 
but as their family grew, they expanded the house with a four-room addition, making it a classic salt box construction. Samuel Townsend, besides being a prosperous merchant, also served as town clerk, justice of the peace, and was elected to the New York Provincial Congress in 1776. He was a shipping merchant who owned four ships bringing goods such as tea, spices, fabrics, molasses, pottery, rum, and wine from many ports, including England, Portugal, Ireland, Spain, and the Caribbean. The years of most historical interest were between 1778 and 1780, when more than 400 soldiers and officers of the British Army occupied Oyster Bay, and their commander, Lieutenant Colonel John Graves Simcoe, set up his headquarters in Raynham Hall. During the Revolutionary War, Samuel Townsend's son Robert was a key member of the Culper Spy Ring, who supplied General George Washington with critical information needed to win the war for independence. Also, what is believed to be America's first valentine was given here by Lieutenant Colonel John Graves Simcoe to Sally Townsend, Samuel's teenage daughter, on February 14, 1779. Raynham Hall had the town's first kitchen with running water. In 1851, Solomon II erected a three-story water tower in the garden beside the house. Some also believe that Raynham Hall is the most haunted house on Long Island, and tales persist of ghosts believed to haunt the house's many rooms. Make sure you take time to visit this amazing 22-room house museum, which can take you on a journey through time to two important eras in the history of Oyster Bay. audience why you are a big supporter of Raynham Hall. I have taught English for many years at Portlidge School and I have brought students here on several many occasions and I've watched it grow and I've admired the changes that have come here and what a delight to see it blossoming. Introduce yourself. I'm David Sarles. Spell that. S-A-R-L-E-S. -E Fabulous. Here I am with a good friend of mine. Introduce yourself to the camera doll. Nancy DiBenedetto. And I used to sing with uh, David in the choir. David sings. Why are you a big supporter of Raynham Hall? Oh, this museum? Yes. It's, it's a unique little authentic museum from it certainly is it's so beautiful isn't it? it goes back to the 1700s every room is um, detailed with the wallpaper and the little knickknacks the portraits it's exquisite fabulous we'll be back with more interviews keep watching darlings Peace, champagne kisses it started out like a totally normal day. Mom! Okay, move objection deadline to the third line after survey. Oh, honey, for, for when you want, you always use the verb. The star. What are you doing down there? Did you finish your breakfast? Ow. Don't hit your brother. <laughs> I mean, you have to eat something. Here. 
Okay, five minutes to carpool. Where's my coffee? Mm. You okay, Mom? Oh, I'm fine. Sandwich orders. What do you want? Almond butter and jelly. Spaghetti. Oh, you sure you're okay? I'm fine, sweetie. I am so late. Hey, buddy, how you doing? Uh, hey, honey. Hmm. You okay? Uh, yeah, I'm fine. You sure? Oh, yeah. Here. Acai. My favorite. Yeah. See you guys later. Bye. Where are your shoes? Put your shoes back on, please. You know, go help your sister. We're going in three minutes. Oh my God, what am I doing? I forgot to cut off the crust. Voila, shoes on, potty if you need it. Honey, get your sister. Okay, get your shoes. Nobody move. I'm getting a dustpan. Oh. Mom! I think you're having a heart attack. Honey, do I look like the type of person who has a heart attack? <laughs> I'm just gonna sit down. <sighs> totally fine. Don't forget to wear the high socks with the shin guards. Forget about the shin guards, Mom. <gasps> Come on, Mrs. Onerdog is not gonna wait. I'm sorry to bother you. <laughs> I think I might be having a little heart attack. <laughs> Nothing really, just some nausea, tightening of the jaw, dizziness, shortness of breath, muscle pain, achiness, this terrible pressure in my chest. Oh, really? They can be here in how long? <gasps> Two minutes. Can you make it 10? I thought I had gas. Turns out, I was having a heart attack. Heart disease is the number one killer of American women. So now I take care of my heart and I tell the women in my life to do the same. Sounds great, by the way. That's nice, sweetie, but that's not my heart. That is. Make it your mission to save your life and the lives of the women you love. Find out more from the American Heart Association at goredforwomen.org. TV host, entertainment journalist, Cognac Bola Lane, and I am here with Jill Morrison. And she's going to tell my audience why she is a big supporter of Raynham Hall. Hi there. How are you tonight? I'm fabulous. Happy this New Year. This is the 12th Happy New Year. This is the 12th night that Raynham Hall is putting on for the community and members. And I have to say, I love this place. It has so much history. It's all original. And... It's one of those places that it reminds me of where I grew up, the kind of home I grew up in, believe it or not. Um, my mother it's was gorgeous. into this. It's stunning. It's gorgeous. The exhibits are gorgeous. And if you've never been here, you must come and see it. Fantastic. Fanta Can we follow you on Facebook or Instagram? I'm just developing the Instagram. I was on Twitter, and I'm moving over oh, now. So we could, we could talk to you on Twitter? Yeah. Okay. Happy New Year, darling. Happy New Year. Pick, share, pick. And we'll be back with more champagne interviews right here at Cognac's <laughs> Corner Magazine. Keep watching, darlings. Pink champagne kisses. Hello, darlings. You've all heard of Marilyn Monroe. Some of you know Bridget Fardell. Well, now it's time for the cognac show. I said cognac, ooh, ooh. I said cognac, ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm a bubbly blonde, fabulously dressed to impress. One of a kind girl. I was brought into this world wrapped up. 
in pearls. I love to mingle, though my husband reminds me I'm not single. I meet and greet both the famous and the elite. I ride in limousines drinking the finest champagne, wearing first dazzling diamond jewelry. A girl can't complain. I live in upscale life, dining in the finest restaurants, eating the best caviar for free. And no matter how much I eat cognac, ooh, ooh, I sip cognac, ooh, ooh, ooh. This has been a Cry Baby Productions, darlings.